Hey, this is Dan and Brian. Hello. And we are here in our hometown again of Chesterfield, Michigan. And we are going to do a pond renovation. This pond renovation is uh, one that the homeowner originally did by, all by herself. And, well, without further ado, let me uh, turn the camera around and show you what's going on. So, Derek and Zach are draining out the pond right now. Derek is catching the fish, putting them into our uh, fish tanks. Zach's going to grab the aerator, hint, hint, and put it in the uh, fish tank so the fish have air during the construction. So this is an approximate 10 by 10 by 10 pond, and they're having a problem with a lot of heron strikes right now. The homeowner would like to move it away from the house, so we're going to move it a good 10 feet away from the house here. We're going to come up and go 16 feet this way, 11 feet this way, 3 feet deep. We have fish caves over on this end over here. We're going to leave the biological filter here, but we're going to add a skimmer mechanical filtration to this side. Stay tuned and let's see what kind of magic we can make on this project. So we'll be losing a lot of the excavated soils here in the backyard where the recently removed pool was. We're going to slope it down this way to the existing drain and then any extra soils are going to go back in the existing pond so that way um, the, the uh, new pond is away from the house. No fear of, wow that's a big plant. That's just growing inside a pot. Probably want to thin that one out. So one of the reasons why we're doing a, a, this pond renovation, not only is the pond too close to the house with no skimmer and no overflow, potential overflow of the water would go either into the basement, all over the patio, um, just make a mess, is the homeowner has had multiple heron strikes on her fish. She's tried a lot of different things. You can see these pictures here on attempts to keep the heron away, but he still keeps coming back. So we're going to go three feet in depth. We're going to minimize the amount of shelves in this pond because every time we make a shelf in a pond, it brings that heron that much closer to his prey. We're also going to add a fish cave right here, close to the waterfall, good aeration. For the fish, they'll love hiding out there all winter long, but it's also a refuge for them. So that way, um, they got a place to hide in case any predators do come into the pond. We make our shelves 18 inches deep. Herons don't like to, you know, pardon my French, but they don't like to get their private parts wet. So they'll only stand up to their torso, and that's it. They're not going to go any deeper than that. So when you make shelves in a pond, you want to minimize the amount of shelving that you do and keep them at 18 inches deep or make the pond that much bigger so the fish at least have a fighting chance and you're not making sushi bars out there. So let's go over to the job site and we'll check on the progress of this pond. Alright so an update, the pond is excavated out, we've got a shelf underneath the waterfalls here, over in this area we're going to do a nice fish cave. Another water lily shelf here. This pond is going to be three foot in depth. Of course we found the sprinkler lines. Always. Always find them. We've got our skimmer excavated here. We're at a three foot depth, but what we've done is we've tapered this down to right here. 
because in the springtime, whether we clean this out or whether the homeowner decides to clean it out, we're gonna let them know that a pump can sit right down here and then you can take and rinse all the way down to your lowest part of your pond. We have the waterfall, Derek's working on the waterfall. We've got the old classic style um, biofalls from way back when. They have a drop coming out of there. It's gonna go really wide and then it's gonna drop there. That little orange mark right here, that's our water level. level. So we have approximately uh, six inch drops each, each time. So they're all gonna be at different angles. So that way the viewing area doesn't look like it comes straight at you. All the excavated soils are going right in here. And because they have a berm coming back down this way, as well as the neighbors, there's a little swale cut from when the builders uh, did their finished grade here. Back over there in that corner is our catch basin. So what we're gonna do to lose some of these existing soils, we're gonna, we're gonna lay a piece of uh, drain tile, four inch slotted with, um, with a sock on it to keep the dirt out. And then we'll be able to take our soils and cover the top of it again. So we don't want any standing water in the backyard once we've done creating a beautiful pond in their backyard. We don't want to open this up for more problems. Now this is some slate that was around the existing pond and that's typical when um, we're building a pond. We have leftover materials that we don't know what to do with but we got stuff we're going to do with it. We're probably going to make a retaining wall around the back side of the biofalls for it since that is an existing dappled willow. So the guys got the pond all rocked in, the streams all rocked in, the biofall set. We've scraped a lot of the soils and built up a berm up. Not a well, we built a hillside, moved the tree. Um, the pond's filling up right now. Probably a couple hours for this thing to fill up. So tomorrow we're going to address doing the edge treatment around the pond. And then because this soil is so, uh, it's all clay. We're going to bring in some bags of topsoil to be able to uh, to finish off the edge treatments around the pond, and then we'll get this baby fired up. Show you what uh, what this thing looks like. Okay, so this project's a wrap. Let's hear from the homeowner. What do you think, Sherry? I love it. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. More than I could have expected. My girls love it. They, I really didn't think that they would, but yes, I'm very happy with it. It's beautiful, and I can't wait to next year when I have all the plants and everything to see how it turns out. And it's not snowing, right? And it's not snowing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not snowing.
This guy right here, his name's Derek. He's on camera. We used to have a guy named Ed working for us. Where's Ed working now? He's in Missouri. You know, it's halfway between Missouri and... Missouri? Where the hell is that? Missouri. Halfway between Minnesota and Missouri. Mississippi? He came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah, watch. He still watches these videos. He does. Oh, yeah, he does. He doesn't comment. People watch our videos and don't comment. I, man, I don't know about that one. We get Brad Chance. He's always commenting. Who's that? Nobody knows. Uh, he always wa he's watching oh, our videos like all the time. We like Brad. Dennis Feldman. He's always commenting. Dennis is a good guy. 